Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about something that I've been trying to achieve for nearly three decades. I have been plotting this for so many years. I am actually very excited. It is now a part of my live shows. And of course, I'm talking about running DMX lights live, automated with your backtracks. Now, of course, this has been a feature available more than just recently. But to have it all under one device, just from one iPad, your backtracks, your lights, MIDI control, audio, for me, it's a dream come true. Now, back in the day, I bought a box about that big with a few switches on it and a multi-core electrical cable going out of that box. And then I used to connect different park ends, hot park ends with big globes like this. And each button activated a different set of lights, physically sending electricity to the park ends with the blue gels, to the park ends with the red gels, to the strobe, whatever. And I am sure if I still look in my storage unit, I probably will find that box in pieces, more likely, and the cables and the connectors are all there probably. In the past 10 or so years, I've been running DMX lights and controlling them with a computer software. I started with a Chauvet, nice and simple, but effective software. I moved on to the Martin dongle. The Martin MPC software is heavyweight, very elaborate, but also quite complex and complicated. And of course, you need to use a separate computer and some sort of controller to activate and control the lights. And I have been doing so in my live gigs. In front of me, I will have an iPad for the backtracks. Slightly to the right, I will have an iPad to control my mixer. And slightly more to the right, I will have a two octave MIDI controller that is plugged in to another computer or a Windows tablet. And then I will activate the lights in real time while I am playing and singing and interacting with the crowd. Definitely possible. And I have been doing this for a long time, but it needs too much attention, attention away from what is actually in front of me, the audience, what they want, what they need. And because I'm also playing guitar, then the response time has to be chord change or change chord. And that is far from ideal. Ideally, you want to be automating everything. And actually a couple of years ago, I managed to get everything locked in, talking to each other, but it was an elaborate setup. Many cables, USB to MIDI cables and vice versa. Another tablet or computer sitting in the back of the stage, plugged in to the lights. How ideal would it be if everything can be just run from one iPad? Especially now, as for my one-man shows, I don't use a mixer anymore. I run into the Helix, vocals, guitar, backtracks. And the backtracks are plugged in to the Helix via a USB cable. So it gives me control over the Helix. And that's also coming in a video very, very soon. So now I started doing some research and I have found a DMX wireless dongle that you plug in to the first light or your first fixture. And from there you daisy chain all your lights. And this plugs in to your iPad via network, and there are many, many apps you could use, some free, some paid, that you can use to control your lights from the same iPad you actually are running your backtracks from. This is called the PK Knight Easy Node Plus, and I will have a link for it in the description down below. Now, this is a 2.4 gigahertz device, which means it is susceptible to interference. So that means that depending where you are, you might need to play around a little bit with the Wi-Fi channels because it will mean that with interference, you probably are gonna get some dropouts and dropouts means latency from when you press the button to when the light actually lights up. Furthermore, what you could do is you can plug it into another Wi-Fi point. And I am a big fan of these Apple routers and you can now extend your network from the actual unit to a bigger place, bigger network. And you can run it in 5G as well, which means you're not connected directly to the 2.4. The 2.4 stays locally where the lights are. 
and therefore you can increase your distance and stabilize your network a little bit better. The setup for it is quite easy. You set up your own network on one of these Apple routers, give it a name, give it a password, and then you connect into the PK Knight dongle, log into, there's details of logins here, log in and type in the IP address, and you can tell the PK Knight dongle to plug in to your network, and it automatically does so. It actually is very easy. For today's purpose and for the demonstration, I'm going to be plugging directly into the BK Knight with one of my iPads, the one I use live for my backtracks. I'm not going to plug into my Helix for now. This is just a demonstration of the lights and how you can program and playback using your playback app. Mine is State Tracks 3. Most importantly, the software that I found, and not all softwares do that, can run in the background because I use state tracks in the foreground for playback and the lyrics. So your DMX lighting app needs to be able to run in the background. I've gone through three or four different apps. Two or three of them were paid. They are not cheap apps, but the one I settled on was Photon 2. It is a wonderful app. It's quite simple to understand, quite simple to use. I found that if you are using inferior USB cables to plug into your Helix or your other audio device, mixer, whatever, and there's any audio glitches, the app is more prone for crashes than any other times. By no means it is a quick or a simple setup. You need to create your fixtures library first, what lights do you have, and assignment of their channels. Then you need to create presets, red, blue, green, movements, whatever. Then you need to create live buttons that activate those specific presets. I also have a fader for your front of house white light. I'm using slim pars just with white on it, just for a wash. My setup is quite simple. I've got a gig bar two by Chauvet that has a laser, some derbies, strobes, UV, and two potty bar sevens by Max, plus the four Chauvet slim pars for the white wash. Of course, a smoke machine, and the funny thing is when I plug into my Helix via USB, I have programmed one of my Helix buttons as the smoke machine activator via USB. And so it sends MIDI over USB back into the iPad. Through state tracks, I also use MIDI commands to program the tap tempo on the Helix that controls both the delay for my guitar and for my vocal channel. But that is something for a different video coming up soon. All right, so let's change the camera angles around and then you will see my setup. Excuse the little bit of mess in my house, but I don't have a dedicated room for my lights. So I use the entrance to my house and I set up the lights over there. I'm also going to use the microphone from the camera rather because this microphone doesn't reach there. And so the sound will change slightly. Okay, so my lighting setup is pretty simple. It's all mashed up together because there's no room to set it up like I would at a gig. Um, this is the Photon app. Um, this is the live layout. I had to make all the fixtures. I had to make all the scenes and then all the buttons to run the scenes. So for instance, red, green, blue, and then flash. That's a different button because that's a toggle switch. That's a flash, red, green, and blue. And it's laid out onto this keyboard. So red, green, blue, and then red, flash, green, flash, blue, and some other scenes around. I've got a, a fader here that controls, as you can see, the dimmer for the front washers and a whole bunch of other scenes throughout the songs. All right, so let's get started. This is not gonna be a full review of either apps, not Photon and not State Tracks, just to show how I do it and how simple it is to program and to run. I'm going to use one of my own songs, so not to have any copyright issues. I also have a scene set up between songs and State Tracks is sending a MIDI command to Photon 2 to activate a specific scene when a new song is being loaded. So now you see there's nothing on the lights. When I click 
a song I know, you'll see a little scene comes up, and that is what the lights are doing between the songs. When I cue in a new song, let's say I'm playing I know, and then I cue in one of the many, many songs I have here. So it will now, because it's set on the toggle, if I choose another song, it will deactivate the scene. And But what I'm playing, if this goes right, right, right to the end, when there's no audio here, and so when I when I press play on this song, and I will cue in the next song, when this song is finished, it will automatically load Hotel California and start the in-between scenes, the between song scene. This one specifically said to have very dim colors and mostly the whitewash on my face. Excuse the dog barking in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to a song I know, which I'm going to put a link in the description for the official video on my YouTube channel. Song details, edit lyrics. We're going to go inside, and then I'm going to press the MIDI listen button. Press play, start the song, start programming the scenes. I'm going to do one verse, one chorus, and then play it back for you. And I'm not going to sing right now, but you'll understand. That's where the vocals come in, so a little bit of a wash in the face. Second verse comes in. is coming up. stop it there. I can always go back and insert new commands to carry on from where I am right now. I'm just going to save this for now. And I'm going to black out. Choose another song. You see the scene comes up. Black out again. Choose I know. And then I'm going to show you how the song has been programmed. As you can see, not touching the keyboard.
Cool. So there you have it. It's um, two apps working side by side, one in front, one in the back. Controller keyboard, that PK night dongle, and my lights. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and hit that bell button, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.